Joy to the world. The Lord has come. This Christmas, as you unwrap the Christmas gifts you receive, remember the gift of the baby Jesus, the gift that came to live among your mess, to deal with your mess and my mess, and to clean up the effects of our messes. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. Last night at our outdoor service, I, I uh, gave everybody a little bit of a Christmas gift. I didn't do a message. I said, it's too cold out here. We're just going to do what we're doing, and then we're going to go home. But you know what? It's not that cold here, so you're stuck with me. So I was talking with Bob about what the perspective was from the different uh, people in the nativity scene. Hopefully you've seen the, the trailer that shows all the different nativity scenes from people in our congregation. Uh, we had people take pictures of them. And what's going on there is something that we need to really think about. Have you ever wondered what Joseph and Mary must have experienced that night that Jesus was born? Scriptures don't give us much to go on, but I can imagine they were just as proud, just as awestruck as any of us would have been. And like us, they would have seen in their precious baby, little baby all of their hopes and dreams for the coming years as a family together. Wrapped up in those swaddling cloths was more than a newborn infant. It was the embodiment, the embodiment of Mary and Joseph's hope and promise and the fulfillment of their lives. I can imagine what Joseph, thinking about how one day he'd get Jesus to set a, a set of his tools of his own and teach him to work with his hands and to be a craftsman and to make things useful and long-lasting. And I think about Mary how she'd tell him stories and sing to Jesus his so some songs, how she'd teach him to be useful around the house and to listen to his heart as well as to listen to other people. Babies symbolize our hopes and our dreams for the future. And thinking about the future, these are the types of things every parent longs for with their children. Isn't the Christmas story a wonderful story? It is a story that we hear every year, but it is more than just a story. It is something that happened in history that reflects you today and that affects you tomorrow. Listen to that again. It is something that affects you today and reflects you tomorrow. When we open our eyes and our ears and be honest with ourselves, we realize there is such a mess around us. We realize our lives are, are in mess. They're messes. Our world is not neat. Our world is not tidy. And everything is not picture perfect. Our world has problems. And you know what? We each have problems. Now some of us may try to hide the mess. At times we think by not seeing the mess, the mess doesn't exist. We may even think by not, uh, we may even think by not talking about the mess, the mess will evaporate. It will go away. But that is like someone refusing to watch the news and then saying wars and poverty and evil do not exist. It is like a teenager who throws their dirty, roughed up clothes under the bed and tells mom, Yep, I've cleaned up my room, mom. With wars and poverty, people dying, murders, Pandemics, environmental problems, and the drought, uh, the droughts that go on across the country and across the world, it is not too hard to see that there is a mess in the world. The mess is not just in other people's lives, though. The mess of the world extends into each of our lives. Your life, in your life, there are messes. In my life, there are messes. Things that are not quite right. There are things not completed. There are things we wish hadn't happened. Relationships that are broken and needs that, and that need, and need repairing those relationships. We have failed to love God and to love others. What are some of the things or people that untidy your life? Think about it for a moment. What are, your, what are some of the things and people that mess up your life? There are many things that make your life untidy and messy.
Sometimes we pretend that everything's okay, but it's not. At times we go to extraordinary lengths to hide our faults, the things and people that mess up our lives that we don't want others to know about. No matter how hard we try, God still knows. God still knows every detail of our lives. God knows every mess that we are in. And despite him knowing how messy our world is, how messy our lives is, as baby Jesus, he entered into our messy world. That's right. God still came into our messed up world. We spend a lot of time trying, uh, time uh, printing up Christmas things to make things just right. But never forget that Jesus came to us in a very messy way. It has been said that if Jesus was interviewed for a job of the Savior, he probably wouldn't have gotten it. Think about that. If there was an interview set up for being the Savior, and who would be doing the, the interviews but the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees? I bet Jesus wouldn't get the job. He wasn't born in a town uh, that his parents lived in. He was not born where his parents lived. He was born someplace else. He was born to a couple that were not even married yet. He was born in a cattle shed, in a barn. Ever smelt a place where cows, sheep, and horses sleep and eat? Ever walked through the animal enclosures at a show or a zoo? They are the most unpleasant places to be. In fact, they just plain stink. And this is where God chose to enter the world in a stinky, messy barn. You know, there's something about bad smells. Bad smells distract us. They affect the, uh, the, the effects of the mess is that it can distract us from what is good. I remember some time ago visiting a garden full of beautiful flowers, but you know what? It was not a pleasant place to be. You see, that garden was full of fertilizer, cow manure, and it stunk. The smell distracted me from the beauty of the garden. The mess in our lives has the same effect on us. The mess in our lives distract us from what is important. Think about it. When you have a problem in your life, that problem can consume your time and consume your energies. It keeps you away from the good and helpful. But remember this. Despite the mess that we live in, Jesus came to live amongst us. Would you rather visit a messy, smelly place or a nice, clean place? The fact is Jesus chose to visit our messy world. He chose to live in our messy world to do his Father's will. Why? It is simple. Because he loves us. Because he loves you. He came to be a solution for our mess. In fact, he is the only guaranteed solution of our mess that we have. All other solutions simply cover up our problems. All other solutions may make us make life pleasant, but a little, but in a little while, like a fake smile or a sweeping under the uh, under the dirt, dirt under a mat, it's it's still there. But Jesus came as a human to deal once and for all with our mess, your mess my mess. With a mess that affects us now and has the potential to prevent us from receiving the inheritance God wants us to have, Jesus didn't come for a select few. He came for all people, even you. As many of you know, I've gone through a difficult time this last year. As, um, I, am, I am now divorced, have been divorced. I've, uh, it's been it's been it's been a long year but you know I take pleasure in knowing that within the mess God is there within the mess God has helped me to be happy to be joyful to find joy in my life and it is so incredible Scripture says, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. He, that's Jesus, 
gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us very, his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. To make us his own people. To cleanse us. To free us from every sin. People may say to me, you know, Pastor, you're nothing but a hypocrite because you're divorced. You know what? God blesses us. God makes us, no matter what our condition, God makes us free from our sin. He comes to cleanse us, to make us his very own people. Jesus wants to help everyone. Each, each one of us, we have our relationships uh, restored with the Father. Those relationships restored with the Father equal relationships restored with each other. Will you allow him to help you as he has helped me? He wants to remove the effects of the mess from all of our lives so that we receive the riches and his promises. In Jesus lies not only the hope of a new life that has come into the world, but a new creation that has dawned in the fullness of time. In his letter to the Romans, Paul writes the following from chapter 8. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Not only so, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for adoption and redemption of our body. The birth of Jesus signals the start of a new covenant. The birth of Jesus is a new order of, of a being in which God judges us not on the basis of our righteousness, but on the basis of his own grace and his own mercy and his own love. This is the good news. Second Corinthians chapter five. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. But all things are of God, who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. That's really good news. This Christmas, this Advent season, has been filled with joy like I haven't felt for a very long time. Because I've decided to open my heart, open my mind, to hear what the Spirit is saying, and to revel in the joyfulness of the baby at the manger. For the last many days, uh, well, actually a month, almost two months, we have been doing a nine o'clock devotion where we've been looking at the Christmas carols of our, uh, uh, the music and the songs and the carols of Christmas. And it has been so joyful to look at them. Yeah, it wasn't Christmas season. We were playing Christmas music. But you know what? We need that joy today. As I've said before, I will never forget the discussions that my buddy Chris and I used to have about if you're going to do something, do it with joy. And so that's what I say to you. Be joyful. We're going to sing joy to the world. And let's mean it when we sing it. Joy to the world, not joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. This Christmas, as you unwrap the Christmas gifts you receive, remember the gift of the baby Jesus, the gift that came to live among your mess, to deal with your mess and my mess, and to clean up the effects of our messes. And when he comes again, every believer will fully experience how Jesus has worked in our lives. May God grant that to you on this Christmas day and every day for the rest of our lives. Amen.